Greetings. It's a pleasure to be with you for this special edition of the Massac Report. During this show, we are taking a step away from our standard format. Today, our guest panelists will share thoughts and opinions about a book they have each agreed to read entitled The Dumbest Generation, How the Digital Age Stupefies Young Americans and Jeopardizes Our Future by Mark Bauerlein. Bauerlein is a professor of English at Emory University who has also served as former director of research and analysis at the National Endowment for the Arts. His book, as you might guess, generated much conversation and controversy across campuses around the country. His contention is that we should be careful to recognize the digital instant gratification and attitude that promotes the idea to be able to find the act of actually knowing and understanding something. In the words of the LA Times' Lee Derman, Bauerlein worries that young people of impressive e-intelligence are experiencing a collective loss of context and history and neglect, in Bauerlein's words, of the enduring ideas and conflicts. It will be exciting to hear for us to hear our panelists share their thoughts and opinions with respect to Bauerlein's thesis. Our panelists are Mr. Joseph Kobza, Assistant Principal, Ms. Joan Venero, member of the Massac English Department and published author, and senior students Caroline Fenn and Max Gray. Our panelists have agreed to five questions to which they will address their thoughts and opinions. Without further ado, I will pose the first question that asks, does everyone agree that the dumbest generation discussed in Bauerlein's book is in fact the dumbest? And anyone have a cool early response? I'll kick it off. Okay. Uh, I think it's an interesting. Uh, it's an interesting question. It's an interesting book. Um, I don't necessarily agree with. I don't necessarily agree with Bauerlein's assertion that this is the dumbest generation. Um, and I look at it. I look at uh, Benjamin Bloom from the 1950s, and Benjamin Bloom had this taxonomy of learning, and he said some of the lowest levels of learning are those at the remembering and understanding levels. And a lot of Bauerlein's book generally addresses those areas where kids don't have the rote memorization. Um, a lot of things that we think they should know, and I, I don't disagree with, there's a lot of things at the lower level of Bloom's taxonomy that kids should know. Um, but when you look at the taxonomy and you look at what kids are doing today, we see a lot of what they're doing at the highest levels, which in, in Bloom's taxonomy is creating the ability to assemble and construct and create and design, develop, formulate, and write. Um, we, we see a lot of student work at that end of the spectrum with Bloom's taxonomy. But it definitely, his, his research definitely does show that there's some major knowledge deficits uh, in some pretty basic areas. And I, I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing because in some aspects, um, you know, he kind of hits on the head with some of that, you know, memorization and understanding. But on the other, on the other spectrum of it, looking at Bloom's, you know, I, I kind of disagree with his assertion that they're the dumbest generation because I'm kind of really inspired and awed by some of the things that our kids can produce these days. But one of the things he seems to infer, uh, going along with your comments, is that a transgenerational experience is lost. That the younger people just see their time in existence as the ultimate of importance, and therefore there's a, a lag factor in not recognizing the transition that occurs from one generation to the next. At least that's one of the interpretations I took from the book. Anyone have a comment in response to what uh, Mr. Cobbs has said or my statement? I'll take that one on. Um, I agree with what Joe Cobbs has said related to Bloom's. And with respect to what you just said, Carl, I think that um, Bauerlein seems in, at times to suggest that that the younger generation is intending to alienate the older generation through technology. And my response to that is that it seems harsh and stereotypical in some of Bauerlein's treatment and that there is nothing prohibiting the older generations from jumping right in, which we see actually happening. Um, and I don't think that the fact that young people own, own technology is at all correct. And I think that um, the 
elders to teens now who are relinquishing their responsibility and saying, well, it's a, it's a younger person's world. I mean, this, this happened when we were kids. You know, we were the counterculture. But, um, you know, now this is the millennial culture. But what happened, those of us who are older than teens have a responsibility to interact with teens, as we all know at the high school level, and furthermore to help teens along in how to interpret what they get from media. It's not just, okay, here, have that, go on your, go on your merry way. So I found some faults, I found some circular reasoning actually apparent in the book. Just one point of reference for our audience. So uh, Powerline is thinking of the dumbest generation is everyone under 29 and under, age 29 and under. So, you know, it's not just the teenage population, which I think is mm -hmm. interesting that he extends it to that. Now. Uh, Caroline or Max, any comment you want to share at this point? Um, I, I definitely agree with Mrs. Venero that um, the problems that Mark Powerline is talking about in here about the younger generation and how it's kind of ignoring the older generation is true of any generation that you could possibly think of um, if you're making a generalization like that. Because if you think about like the 60s, which I happen to be very interested in, so the generalization right there doesn't apply to everybody. Um, if you think of that generation, the vast majority of them also were saying what their parents were doing was wrong and bad. And so the, I don't think that Th that's any different with our generation. Max, any yeah, comment? I uh, very much agree. I very agree with Mrs. Venero's comment that this is very much just a, a reincarnation of that old culture versus new culture, which happens to be backed up by uh, 200 pages worth of statistics. <laughs> I, I, that's kind of how I see it. Well, how do, how do you then respond to his con concern about the what he calls that younger generation's capacity to uh, be more focused and he makes that distinction that we shouldn't just assume e-intelligence is intelligence. The fact that just because you know how to use all this technology, uh, whether it be through your Blackberry, your cell phone, or your computer, uh, we might be misconstruing uh, our capacity to really understand the depth and context of, of ideas. Do you find agreement with his criticism of that, or do you find that disagreeable? Well, I agree with the fact that e-intelligence doesn't necessarily imply regular intelligence, but I very much disagree with the fact that e-intelligence is the only one that young people have. Mm -hmm. Any response by you? Uh, what I would say is that you kind of, what do you value more as a society, as a, as a generation? I think that for younger people, especially those that grew up with the internet, you're looking at maybe, maybe someone might know from a previous generation a lot about World War II, but if I want to find out anything about World War II, give me five minutes and I can. I mean, what, what do you value? You want to have a, a good amount of information about a certain amounts of things? You want to be able to have almost anything you want? Well, let's move to a second question. Do you agree or disagree with Bauerlein's claim that pop culture is, de is a detrimental to intelligence? And I know, Caroline, you have a sensitive uh, feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, um, I very much disagree with because. Throughout the whole book, I was noticing that he was just very much attacking the um, young people's focus on pop culture and entertainment. And I think that is just, <clears throat> I think that's really wrong. And I think there's a lot of value to pop culture and entertainment. And I know that a lot of the history that I'm interested in has been sparked by mentions of that history in in other entertainment media. Like, for example, um, a movie that I saw mentioned the book On the Road by Jack Kerouac, so I decided to read that book, which Bowerlin um, referred to in this as a, a book that people should have read, and I, I wouldn't have read it had I not heard about it, so I don't, I don't agree with his complaints about pop culture. <laughs>